In the words of the song by Sam Cooke, change is going to come someday. And as it relates to voting here in the Commonwealth of Virginia, change is here now. The new laws are in effect, and they're going to have a major impact on how we vote, especially here in Hampton Roads. It's Stay the Water. I'm your host, Dr. Eric Laville. Stay tuned as we discover and discuss changes in voting here in Hampton Roads. Welcome back. It's Stay the Water. I'm your host, Dr. Eric Laville. We'd like to thank you for joining us, as you always do, here as we broadcast from the campus of the Norfolk State University, a top 20 HBCU for the fourth consecutive year in a row. From the none other but the baddest radio station in the land, that's none other than WNSB Hot 91, the soul of VA. Also, we'd like to thank all of our listeners for supporting us. As you always do, we couldn't do what we do without you. And that's why here on Stay the Water, we always like to bring our movers, shakers, and policymakers to you to discuss issues important to the community. Also, we'd like to thank the Spartan Nation, the best alumni, faculty, staff, administrators, students, alumni, stakeholders in the world. We couldn't do what we do without you. And we thank you for your support here as we continue to bring you up-to-date and timely information about laws and public policy affecting your life. Speaking of the campus, I'd like to welcome, it's the new freshmen who are here on campus and all the returning students and faculty and staff. You know, uh, college campuses are opening up all over the country and new minds or fresh minds are coming to campus to learn you know, a lot about different things and to make their impact in the world. And here at our university, at Norfolk State University, home of the Spartan Nation, that's exactly what we have. Record number of freshmen here on campus and also returning students. When all other institutions are seeing declines in enrollment, we are seeing the growth. And with growth, of course, (laughs) they're always growing pains. Uh, But Growth is good, and we will adjust and make it happen. So, again, welcome to everyone uh, who is new to the Spartan Nation. Welcome to all the returning Spartans and the like. Well, you know, it's, it is almost September. It's almost Labor Day. But here in the Commonwealth of Virginia, we know that August is a very important time. Because why is that? Because we have what we have here in our country, in our Commonwealth, a very important election every single year. Now, of course, you know, you could have voting fatigue, but here in the Commonwealth, it is extremely important because of the importance of our uh, position that we have here in, um, in, in, in the country. So our state, our Commonwealth, is, and you, those that listen to the show know how much I love the Commonwealth. I believe it's the best and the greatest state in the union for all this history and all, all the good uh, that we have here. And not only that, but I also believe that the way that our country is going as it relates to being split down the middle, the Commonwealth itself is a a, a microcosm of just that. And a lot of important issues are decided here, right here in our uh, great, great state. So with that, you know, we have a lot that's going on and we have an election coming up in November November election, all 140 seats are up for election or re-election. You know, that's, uh, that, that, that is huge because what that means is that we're going to get 140, some season, uh, but many, many new voters who are uh, legislators who are coming to Richmond in order to create laws and public policies just for you. So what does that mean? That means that you have to be informed about who these individuals are that are going to be voting and putting things up for you, uh, for you to live by. And if you don't do that, if you choose the the wrong person, then you've got four years of legislation that could affect you negatively. But if you choose the right person, it can make all the difference in your community. And that's why, you know, we believe that, you know, we're able to uh, have uh, a great dialogue. We're able to have great debates. We're able to have great engagement with individuals uh, who want to represent you. So with that, 
you know, we want to show you and break down what's happening so that you're informed about where you're voting, how to vote, and not not who to vote for, but where you're voting, how to vote, and the and the precincts that you're going to be voting at. So let's take a look at, according to the Virginia Department of Elections, you know, as it relates to the election, make sure that you're registered to vote. Because here in the Commonwealth, we have what's called early voting, absentee voting. So according to the Virginia Department of, of Elections, the first day of in-person early voting starts Friday, September 22nd. Friday, September 22nd. You can go and vote absentee. Now, what's the important thing about voting absentee here in the Commonwealth? Voting absentee here in the Commonwealth means that there's no questions asked. You can go vote, you know, whenever it's convenient for you. That's what happened in the legislature during the time of former Governor Northern administration and the Democrats where they were in, in charge of the House uh, and the Senate. What ended up happening is that they passed what's called common sense legislation to provide open more access more access to the ballot box where other states were providing less access, where other states were uh, closing down uh, precincts and, you know, just our neighbors below us in North Carolina. You know, they that was a major case, (laughs) you know, federal case that we saw, you know, with that, you know, in other states like Texas and many others that were disenfranchising voters and more specifically African-American, black and brown and poor communities they were disenfranchising those individuals from casting the vote that they wanted to cast. But here in the Commonwealth, we expanded the access to the ballot box. We didn't decrease access, but we expanded the access to the ballot box. That's common sense legislation. That's good legislation. And it's because, again, when you have the right people in place, they make good policies that affect everybody. Everybody. Why do I say everybody? Because just recently, just last month, well, actually earlier this month, uh, the Republican Party uh, here in the Commonwealth of Virginia said that they wanted to capitalize upon early voting, early voting in order to win elections. That's right. They want to capitalize upon it. As a matter of fact, our governor endorsed it. And he says early voting is the way. As a matter of fact, according to an article from USA Today just this past week, It showed that it was entitled Republicans need to stop fighting early voting. It's how we win on Election Day, according to this article. As a matter of fact, it states that elections are competitions and the principles for victory are straightforward. Which candidate has the most compelling vision, communicates that vision the best, builds trust to turn promises made into promises kept. Those are the individuals that's going to win the election. As a matter of fact. USA Today states that in Virginia this fall, where every seat is up in the General Assembly on the ballot, states cannot be more consequential for future of the state. So they say that Republicans have an opportunity to submit the majority in the House, flip the Senate, and take Virginia to the next level. But the only way they can do that is if they engage early voting. Early voting is the key to winning these elections. That's according to uh, the article here in USA Today. Now, again, 45 days is what was voting on during that time period. That's what the Democrats pushed. Now, again, it is documented through legislative history that the Republicans actually fought against this. It is is documented, it's well documented. But because it's law and because of what happened in 2021, uh, with the election of our current governor, Glenn Youngkin, who defeated former Governor Terry McAuliffe, it was because of the push for early voting. It was because of pushing individuals to the polls before Election Day that got them to win. That's good legislation. That's common sense legislation. That's what makes elections one, swing one way or the other. So Republican strategists, that's, that's what they're saying, that that is the best game plan for doing just that. In Virginia, you do not need a reason or an excuse to vote early or by absentee ballot. You can do that. According to USA Today, Democrats put these rules in place while in control of Virginia's government and have used these rules to their advantage by vastly outpacing Republicans in early and absentee voting.
So what's the key? They believe that educating the public about early voting options is important, is very important. So, you know, with that, that's what we do here on this show. We educate the public about what's happening. We educate the public about, again, issues affecting them, the community. And right now, the Republicans are just catching up. They're saying, hey, this is what we also need to do. So you can go to their portal. It's called secureyourvotevirginia.com. Secureyourvotevirginia.com. It provides a step-by-step instructions for requesting an absentee ballot or voting early by mail or in person. That's secureyourvotevirginia.com. Provides step-by-step instructions on how to how to vote, uh, secure your vote, and so forth. And this is the Republicans. This is the where the Republicans want to secure your vote. But you can go also to the Virginia Department of Elections at elections.virginia.gov. You know, this is where you can go to and find out where you need to vote. That's elections.virginia.gov. Go here where you can find out where to vote. Where, where your precinct is, who's actually running in your community, and be able to make a more well-informed decision. So once again, the first day of early voting at your local registrar's office is Friday, September 22nd. Now, you're going to hear a lot more of this as we start to do our pre-election push and our election push and analysis of this upcoming election, which we're going to start after Labor Day. After Labor Day, we're going to start doing that. So we're going to have our election series, election series after Labor Day here on the show. And by with that, you're going to know who's running in your community here in Hampton Roads. You're going to know where we're going to continue to provide education about where to vote uh, who and, and so that you can make a more well-informed decision. Also, according to the, uh, election, the Virginia Department of Elections, the deadline to register to vote, the deadline to register to vote or update your existing registration is October 16th. October 16th, uh, October 16th. Now, you may register after this date through Election Day and vote using a provisional ballot, but you have to come back and verify that ballot. So to avoid that, go ahead and register to vote by October 16th. So listen, voting is your duty. It is a duty, and it's a right that we fought and bled for. So make sure you go out and do the right thing and vote on Election Day. Also, the deadline to apply for a ballot to be mailed to you is October 27th. Guess what? You don't have to go to the registrar's office. You don't have to go to the ballot box. You can get a ballot, and it'll be mailed to you October 22nd. And your request must be received, of course, by 5 p.m. And voter registration offices are open for early voting on Saturday, Saturday, October 28th. That is, again, Monday through Friday and Saturday. You can't beat that. And the last day of in-person early voting at your local registrar's office is Saturday, November 4th, Saturday, November 4th. And that is before the general election in November. You can go vote early. And of course, the general election is Election Day, November 7th. So we're going to be talking about this. And it's going to be a great buildup as we start this election series and talk about, you know, the candidates that are coming up the candidates that are on the ballot, the issues that are affecting you, the the things that they want to do, the promises that they're making. And you're going to have a chance to engage them to find out exactly, you know, hey, what's what and how they're going to make it better in your community. It's Stay the Water. I'm your host, Dr. Eric Laville. As Sam Cook said, change is going to come someday. And as it relates to the laws here in Virginia for election, change is now. Here in Hampton Roads, there are two very important changes that have taken place as it relates to voting and where to vote. You know, first, we're going to start in the city of Chesapeake. You have Chesapeake and Virginia Beach, but we're going to start in the city of Chesapeake because here's a major concern as it relates to voting and voting early. According to News uh, Channel 13, News Now, Chesapeake residents are concerned over early voting locations. The city council on last week, August 15th, well, they voted to approve four early voting satellite locations for the upcoming November election, but one in the heart of the black community was left out. Now, according to Channel 13, city council voted to approve this. Uh, however, uh, the community center in the heart of Chesapeake's black community was missing from the list. That's Cuffey, 
Community Center. Several Chesapeake residents urged City Council to take another look at early voting locations. Uh, a Chesapeake resident is quoted here uh, saying that, quote, I am, however, very disappointed. There is no satellite location covering one of our largest community of, communities of color. Quote, it smacks of racism and voter suppression. Now, according to Channel 13, the Chesapeake Electoral Board voted to approve four early voting satellite locations. That's Russell Memorial Library, Indian River Library, Major Hillard Library, and Central Library. And the board also swapped the Camelot Community Center for Major Hillary, uh, which has been a location for Deep Creed in many years and so forth. Um, but that leaves only four. And they eliminated both the Green Bar Library and the Cuffey Community Center. That leaves only four locations instead of the six that they had last year. Now, according to the Chesapeake NAACP president, Dr. Shirley Augusta, she says that, quote, we will not stand to close diff- different localities that will hinder others from being able to exercise their right to vote. Uh, the Cuffey Community Center, according to Channel 13, sits in a 54% African-American zip code, 54%, which is one of the largest in the city of Chesapeake. The city's uh, registrar, Mary Lynn Pinkerman, argued that the location only saw 1% early voter turnout during the 2022 election, which is why they took it out. But, quote, uh, she says that certainly nothing racial even entered their mind, her mind. Uh, Pinkerman assured the city council members. She also stated that she's been inundated with local, uh, with with racial comments. Uh, Not even a blimp on the radar did she see uh, uh, that coming a mile away. And she said the criteria, they took a look at it, and uh, she has deadlines, and uh, she has the law, and that's what she was looking at. So, you know, she is saying that the city registrar, this is not a racial issue, but simply a numbers issue. In 2022, they only saw 1% early voting. Now, mind you, 2022 was not a big, uh, we didn't have a lot on the uh, ballot uh, for election. But it was an important election. But we all know that the biggest elections that we have, biggest voter turnout, is when we have the president on the ballot and when there's a governor's race. Those are your two biggest turnouts, period. So every four years and here, to, uh, you know, the year after, you know, here in the Commonwealth. So in 2020, we had a large voter turnout. You're going to have that. The president's on the ballot. In 2021, you have a large voter turnout because the governor's on the ballot. 2022? You have none of those executive offices on the ballot, so you're not going to have a large voter turnout. So true, you would have lower numbers. However, do those numbers correlate with actual the success of voter early voter turnout? Um, you know, that's, that's an argument that can be made. As a matter of fact, according to Councilwoman Dr. Ella Ward, who is an alum of the Norfolk State University and major supporter, she said that having a small uh, turnout is not a good enough reason to get rid of that location. She says, quote, because 1% turnout, that's well, that's 1% that may not turn out when it's time to vote, when they do matter. And she's exactly right. We know that elections can turn on a few votes, less than 1%. So what happens if that 1% can't turn out because we, they don't have transportation, because it's hard to uh, vote because of their circumstances. They don't know where various locations are. You know, these things happen. It happens. That's why when you have such large populations and large percentage of a demographic population where uh, there are some challenges, economic challenges, socioeconomic challenges, you have to make sure that they have the opportunity and the resources to actually cast their vote and do things within the democratic system. Um, matter of fact, there was a Chesapeake resident that agreed with Dr. Ward saying that 1%, if they don't get an opportunity to vote early, they may not vote at all, according to the citizen, private citizen reported by News Now Channel 13. So you say, so you just denied a 1% of your taxpayers the opportunity to go vote 
because they're worried about a percentage. Now, of course, uh, Pinkerman also said, which is the city's registrar, it comes down to the cost of keeping that many locations open. Now, Councilman Don Carey, who is also an alum of the Norfolk State University, he reminded citizens that they could have made their voice heard at the electoral boards August 1st uh, when these locations were actually decided. Uh, He said, quote, the time for citizens to let their voice be heard on where they want to have these voting uh, locations. They often want these uh, they often want these voting locations or precincts to be open the days. Uh, what these precincts to be open takes place in those meetings. He's speaking of the electoral board uh, meetings. He says those meetings do not happen in a vacuum. Now, he said those, now, though some citizens and council members agree that they could do a better job of advertising, italicize all not at city meetings, not just city council meetings. So, you know, to, to that point, who knows about these meetings? So you have a population and, that's out there working. They're making ends meet. They're making sure that their children have food. They're making sure that they are uh, doing everything that they can uh, to make sure that their family's provided for. And meetings like that, they need to be advertised a little bit better. Uh, now, he also said, Kerry also said that they vote against, if they vote against that motion, they're up against a tight timeline to have any early locations at all. So he said any creation or removal of locations have to be decided 60 days before early voting in order to have adequate time to advertise. When the council meets again, that'll put them at 57 days. Kerry also said he disagree with the reason for the Cuffey Center and Camelot being moved, being taken off, but that doesn't mean it's a racial undertone. But in the end, the city council voted 8-1 to one to approve the four locations as is, once again, citing the 60-day window. Dr. Ella Ward voted against. Now, Dr. Ella Ward, of course, uh, well, she is a Democrat. Don Kerry is a registered Republican. And Washington also said he's, he was disappointed. That was one of the citizens. Quote, this is about giving these communities of color the opportunity, every opportunity to go vote. Moving forward, our focus will be in 2024 early voting. And also the good thing about Virginia is that we vote every single year. So this will come back in 2024. And that's very true. 2024 is a major year. So this definitely needs to be heard on the ballot. He also said we need to make sure all of the voices in the city of Chesapeake are heard, not just the population in certain areas. Now, I've there's one quote. I actually reached out to one of the delegates uh, who actually represents Chesapeake and who is a major alum of this institution. That's none other than Delegate Cliff Hayes. I reached out for his reaction to this decision. And Delegate Cliff Hayes says, quote, the decision reveals pretty despicable irony. He said they closed a voting location named in honor of the individual responsible for dubbing Chesapeake as the city that cares after cutting off access opportunity to the ballot box for black voters in a large segment of the city's South Norfolk borough, it really doesn't seem that city leaders care at all. Again, this is Delegate Cliff Hayes, who represents uh, the city of Chesapeake in the legislature and who also served on the city council there. Also, the, the Democrats of Virginia released a statement Uh, And they said that the Virginia GOP leadership in Chesapeake is pursuing a course of action that will make it more difficult for Virginians to vote. The locations that Republicans seek to eliminate are located in the heart of the black community of Chesapeake. And they said this action will unambiguously make it harder for black Virginians to cast their ballot and is unmistakably voter suppression. They also said the Democratic Party of Virginia is calling on the city council of Chesapeake to abandon their plan to shutter these early voting sites and eliminate Sunday voting. As Democrats, they believe it's our job to make sure that the right to vote is protected for every Virginian and that voting is easy and as secure as possible. So, of course, early voting will run from October 23rd to November 4th in 
the city of Chesapeake. So, again, as we look at extending and opening access to the ballot box, you do have cities, you do have localities, you have individuals who are, have a mission or are voting to suppress these individuals and in being able to vote. But your vote matters. Well, let's talk about access to the ballot box and making it more fair and equitable. Well, in Virginia Beach, last week, they adopted 10 to 1 a new voting system across the city. And the 10 to 1 election system means that residents can only vote for candidates who run and live in their districts. According to News Now, Grand Channel 13, on Tuesday of last week, Virginia Beach City Council members voted 10 to 1 to formally adopt district voting after debuting it in the 2022 election cycle. Uh, city Councilwoman Barbara Henley was the only city council member to vote against the motion. In a phone call, Henley told 13 News Now that she voted against district voting because she believed the decision should be left to a referendum. But several Virginia Beach residents agreed with Henley and went to the city council meeting to voice their displeasure. Now, uh, keep in mind that uh, the city also held meetings and requested opinions from Virginia Beach residents for several months when they gathered information in order to implement this particular voting system. Now, according to Channel uh, 13 News Now, Virginia Beach historically used what's called an at-large system, meaning that residents could vote for every candidate citywide. But last November, it changed after Virginia Beach residents filed a lawsuit saying that the city violated voting rights by discriminating against minority voters. And the deputy city attorney for Virginia Beach, Chris Borden, said leaders had no choice but to move forward with the 10-1 system because of the federal court order, even though the district said of system voting was not part of the city's charter. Now, there was, uh, he said there was no going back after the federal appeals court in July vacated that order. The 10-1 system, uh, the 10-1 system was already baked into the cake, uh, so to speak, according to him. But now it has been formally adopted. City leaders now have to get approval from the Virginia General Assembly to change the charter or to propose a new state law, which won't be an issue. I want people to I want you to understand that Virginia Beach, this at large voting was a way of disenfranchising voters. This system was a way of disenfranchising black voters, minority voters, when uh, the Voting Rights Act was created. Because you dilute the vote, meaning that you can vote for every person that holds a seat within the city and also the mayor, which suppresses you from voting for your candidate of choice. Well, that's not the case anymore. The city of Norfolk moved back in the 80s to change that. Many other cities moved. Virginia Beach was the last city, one of the last cities here in the Commonwealth to do that. And now you are on a district-wide voting system where you can vote only for the city council person or in, in representing you in your district, and everyone votes for the mayor. That's equitable, that's fair, and that is the democratic system at its best. <laughs> so, listen, you gotta love it. It's the way that we do business here in the Commonwealth, but it's the way our democracy works. Making sure that you're involved, you're informed, it's Stay the Water. I'm your host, Dr. Eric Laville. Join us every single Sunday as we bring movement, shakers, and policymakers to you to discuss issues important to the community. As always, God bless, be great, and we'll see you next week.